<laughs> Man, I've missed that sound. Hey, folks, I'm C. P. C. K. <laughs> I remember when video games did that. Alright, give me a second, guys. There you go. Kinda makes you realize that optic media and load times aren't all that bad, huh? Anyway, hey folks, I'm CPC Gamer, and I'm playing Super Mario Land 3, Wario Land, because this was the early 90s, and you had to have crazy mashups for things in order to ship. It's how we got Anthrax and PE. Love that track. And I also love this game. It's one of my favorites, and I am super happy to be up here in it for you guys. Yeah, and that's how you do a title screen! Unexplained violence and explosions. It's like you got Stone Cold Steve Austin in your Game Boy. Now, yeah, I'm gonna do things differently. I'm gonna break with tradition and pick save file C. Nobody ever does that, so I'm gonna give it some love. Nobody puts save file C in a corner. Alrighty, so this is our world map all 12 glorious square feet of it. I'm being mean. This game's actually pretty expansive from what I remember. Now, our first stage is Rice Beach, so... Yeah, let's go. Course number one. This is our... questionable hero, Wario. It's A button to jump, and if you hold up, you do this moon jump. Wario's got an insane vertical leap. B button does your special move. Generally, it's a dash, but there's one power-up that does something different. We'll get to that when we get to it. And as you've seen, with Wario Land, you have to kinda... unlearn a lot of the things that you know about the Mario series. Or platformers in general, really. In this game, enemies do not necessarily hurt you if they touch you. Wario takes priority, so you can pick them up, throw them around, mash them into the scenery. It's pretty great. In fact, the only time you get hurt when you touch an enemy is if you hit something that is obviously dangerous. You know, spears, spikes, spines, things that begin with a sp noise, you know? This is our first power-up, Bull Wario, one of the more common ones. If you jump and hold down, you do a ground pound. It knocks over every enemy on the screen, and you can also use it to smash through wooden bricks beneath you. Holding up while you jump lets you stick to the ceiling, and this will come into play in... I think precisely two stages. And you know what? I didn't want to pick up that stupid hard power-up anyway. I'll get it later. And I also didn't want to hop off the ladder right away. Thank you very much, Janky Physics. You know, the other Wario Land games, they use different engines, and they fix a lot of the physics bugs that this game has, but from what I've played, they're not as good as this one, I don't think. There we go. That's what it looks like when you smash downwards through the blocks. I don't know why they break in that two then one pattern like that, but... Hey, there you go. Okay, so something I really like about this game it has a lot of platforming puzzles that you can just choose not to do and skip over them. Come on, game. I don't like the grabbing physics sometimes, but it is always satisfying to just punch your enemies off the screen like a cartoon or something. Especially since you shake them down for change while you do it. And interestingly, that brings me to this game's plot. Although actually, no, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to show this off first. Now, at the moment, you can't get across this little pit. But if you use the built-in debug mode, you can. And there's a 3-up waiting for you on the other side, if you manage to make the journey. And it's cute little touches like that that just make this game for me. But there aren't as many as in Onichanbara, for example. But 
you know what? I think you'll see them. And so will I. Right after this cutscene. Now this guy cannot be attacked. Not yet, anyways. And if you follow the hieroglyphs on the back wall, holding up and tapping B pulls 10 coins out of your wallet. You need to pay 10 coins to exit most of the levels, but you can also use the coin as a makeshift projectile. It's very handy. Now after each stage, you have a choice of two bonus gains. One for coins, one for hearts. I'm going to show off the coin one. Oh hey, do you remember that one game with Wario and buckets? Nintendo does! So, one of these buckets contains a money bag, which will double our coins, and one has a weight, which will halve it. We get up to three pulls in total. Now, a clever man would put the weight into his own bucket, because he would know that only a great fool would reach for what he was given. I am not a great fool, so I can clearly not choose the bucket in front of Wario. But the game must have known that I was not a great fool, and it would have counted on it, so I clearly cannot choose the bucket in front of me. Now, I have beaten the stage, which means that I am incredibly strong, which means that I could pick the bucket in front of Wario, hoping that the weight is in there, and my strength will save me. <sighs> Six years later... I've made my choice, and I pick... <laughs> yes! <laughs> that was the wrong outcome, but, you know, from a comedic standpoint, that was brilliant. Ah, and I'm done with that. Brave Sir CPC Gamer bravely ran away. I mean, I tend not to do the bonus games anyway, but I figure I might as well show them off for you guys. Oh, and incidentally, this is not going to be a perfect run. Like, I will almost certainly get some stupid deaths in, especially when we get to the third world. But I am going to show off as much as I can, and I will almost certainly be showing off all the secret rooms. I mean, I haven't played this game for about 20 years at this point, but I think it's going to be so ingrained that a lot of it is... Automatic, he says as he falls off an incredibly easy platform. Anyway, you saw I got a 1-up from that enemy just now. Every time you kill an enemy, you get plus 1 to your heart counter. Those heart containers give you plus 10. Every time you get to 100, you get an extra life. Oh, and this guy looks pretty cute. Whoa! Okay. Thankfully, you can barge them out the way. And you can also use this guy, the Dragon Power Up, if you want. Oh, and uh, if you can get on the same horizontal plane, you can't actually duck and attack. But you can use them as springboards to do really cool tricks like that, though. Yeah, the Dragon Helmet is also pretty cool because, like, paradoxically, it can shoot fire underwater. It's a video game, don't think about it too much. It's not the weirdest thing we're going to see in this thing. Now, this is a midpoint, and that was a Bull Wario power-up. General rule of thumb, if the game says, hey, take this specific hat, you take it and you like it. Oh, and I'm going to show this off. If you hold an enemy, they are still an interactable object. Thus. Now, there are some cases where that doesn't work, but generally you can use them as sort of a shield against falling enemies. I always thought I was so cool when I was able to do that. To be fair, I thought I was cool a lot of the time when I played this game. It's one of the reasons I choose to, to come to it now, in fact. Oh, and taking a... Speaking of cool, check out the floor is lava skills! Disclaimer, anytime you see cool platforming skills in this game, please regard it as accidental. Also, the animation keeps going while the game is paused, including these sliding platforms, and you can use this to your advantage, like you can always land or always drop whenever you like. This is not cheating, and is a perfectly legitimate strategy. Also, you can go up to that platform, but there's, there's nothing there. It, it's just a decoration. So another reason I come to this, a friend of mine, Duke of the Bump, is also LPing this, and I'm giving technical comments on the videos. And he and I have been talking, he suggested maybe I should play it, show you guys what's going on, rather than telling. And why not, I say? 
Speaking of which, I'm going to do the heart mini game. I'm sure my ring rust hasn't set in too badly. So here, you are given five bombs. The power gauge moves on its own, and you have to stop it in the right place, and time it so you let go and hit your moving target. I used to be red hot at this. Yeah. If you don't land in the furthest right corner of the power bar, you'll never hit your enemy. I mean, there is no way to cancel out of that either. I was gonna say, time was, I could nail all five targets on the hardest difficulty, but... That was before I was old and decrepit, so... This isn't going as well. He says. I mean, what, four out of five isn't bad? Yeah, four out of five, not bad at all, I will absolutely take that. There's me 70 hearts, enough for a one-up, and 40 left over. Oh, and seven coins left over as well. I'm gonna be a hundred air in no time. Now, this course has a little bullseye in the center of its map marker. Oh, it also has the best music in the entire game, I tell you what. I love this variation of Wario's theme. Like, I once created my own variation of this song and used it in my university dissertation. Okay, and I'm just going to pause this game for a second. You see the chompers down there? You see how the sand is flowing behind them, rather than being cut off by a plain white background? I appreciate that level of detail. There are not many Game Boy games that got that right. And it's actually because of games like, well, things like that, that you can tell this is one of those odd Game Boy games that came somewhere between two distinct styles of game. Another good example, all the enemies are named. Oh, by the way, there's a uh, secret tunnel down here. The enemies all have names. But, on the other hand, the game doesn't raffle them off at the end, a la Super Mario World. I mean, they are all in the manual, though. So, there is that. And if I just... No, I haven't. Okay. I thought I missed a power-up in that last room and stopped myself from escaping. But the game is pretty good for that. Like, I don't think there's a any unwinnable situation. Well, that was stupid. It does help me to illustrate a point, though. You can't use the secret rooms if you are small, but they aren't strictly necessary, so the game is still not entirely unwinnable. That was a delicious sentence, CPC game. You should pat yourself on the back for that one. Whoa. Okay, distraction. There's a secret exit to this level, and to get there, you need to go over this wall. You can't reach it just yet, but using the debug mode, you can just moon jump over there. There's a hidden bit of level geometry over there as well, and you'll otherwise never see it. And I'll probably end up showing that off in a, a later video. And I'm just going to put this disclaimer up right about now. I kinda hope you guys like hearing about the technical details of a game, because... I mean, I wouldn't say I know everything, but I know more than is reasonable about what is going on in this game. Oh no, we're being chased by a thwomp! Except it's not called that in this game, because the manual calls them pouncers. Anyways, yeah, I love this game like you would not believe. It's the first game I strive to hit 100% completion, the first game I replayed from scratch for fun, the first game I decompiled and took apart, but I found all kinds of stupid nonsense in this thing. And... Of course, I expect to be sharing as much as I can with you guys. Now, in the meantime, how on earth do we get across this lava? Who am I kidding? You, you probably worked this one out already. You can... You can just ride across on top of the thwomp. I, I mean the... The pouncer. Or... Pounder or whatever. It's something I don't know about this game. Why is it called a pouncer? Like, Super Mario World came out... I think three years before this game? And it named these guys as thwomps. So why did the developers change it here? I mean, possibly because they have more abilities in this game. We'll 
We'll get to those in the next room, I think? Oh! Dang it, that was stupid. So, as you can probably tell, I'm playing this on a GameCube. And as such, I'm using an official GameCube controller. And I'm still not 100% with an analog stick to control this D-pad driven game. Thankfully, the GameCube controller is the greatest controller ever made, so I really shouldn't have too much trouble adapting. And I'm not too fussy about the, the box that I missed over to the left, that th there's just a heart in there. Ah, this is the room I was thinking of. And that is called Showing Without Telling. If you can trap an enemy beneath a swamp, then it will turn into a 10 coin. Right, probably for the best, they demo that for you. Because getting caught by a thwomp is instant death. Probably not something you want to find out by yourself. And I'm not going to do either one of those. I don't think I will for the rest of the playthrough, actually. I, mean, I find the best way to win is to just... not gamble, you know? Oh my! What a lovely skull icon. Surely this is indicative of... absolutely nothing. Oh, I'm just gonna keep quiet for a bit, because I love this variation on the theme. This plays in every boss stage, and it's a really nice tonal shift. You know, it's not wacky and awkward and syncopated like the other tunes. It's more... you know, focused, because this is serious music. And I am being a little more serious with this one. I'm not gonna risk getting hit. It's one of the more sort of paradoxical things about this game. I am going to show off a lot as I play this, and a lot of the tricks have already come back to me, and I'm gonna show off what I can, but it can be kind of dangerous to do that. Oh, okay, speaking of which... Yeah! There you go! If you land on the very edge of the conveyor belt, you get stuck in an endless falling and landing animation. And you can also do infinite ground pounds if you do that as well. There's no real point to it, mostly just... ...bugs out the game engine. So yeah, this is a checkpoint. This costs 10 coins, and I'm gonna use it. Because... ...if I remember rightly... ...the boss of this stage will kick my ass. Like, as often as I intend to show off, I'm going to play on the safer side of things when it comes to, to boss fights and whatnot. And death traps. Oh, and check that out! Every time I did that, I felt like hitting jackpot in a fruit machine. Whoop. Yeah, I absolutely meant to do that. Because I wanted to show off the power switch mechanics. See, because the, the battery was gone. Exactly. Whatever, it's boss time! Now this guy is called Togebro, which means Spike Brother. And you have to hit his stomach if you want to do any damage. You can hit him from beneath like that, which I only learned from Duke of the Bombs LP of this. I always hit him from above when he begins tunneling. And maybe you'll get to see that. Nope, no you won't. Zero leeway, no mercy. So, whenever you defeat a boss, you are treated to a random shower of 1 and 10 point coins. You can easily grab all of them by just pogo hopping like an idiot in the middle of the room. Now, do I want to gamble? No, I don't. There is a point to collecting these coins, and I want to amass as many as I can. And this is the problem with collecting a lot of coins. It, it takes them a while to put them into the money bin. Being rich is exceptionally hard, you guys. Anyway, that's it for today's episode. So join us next time for some more in-depth treasure hunting. And until next time, goodbye.